So yeah, this is, this is the, the template that I made uh, that we're starting from, and it, and it just loads um, it just loads the clips um, plugin. Uh, it, it uses Code Mirror to do, to do the uh, the live editing, uh, and uh, so the, it's just a blank. Uh, well, here it, uh, we use a, a closure script a clips snippet to uh, to load the reagent library, and then we'll put all of our closure functions there and. Then there's a reagent po uh, component that, uh, uh, and uh, oh yeah, and here's my slideshow. So, uh, yeah, I go by Porcostinus. Uh, I'm at Porcostinus on Twitter. It's like a, a combination of uh, a suckerfish and a swine. But uh, right, the Placostinus is the algae eater. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a, some kind of sucker of a different sort. Um, yeah, I uh, I play in a, a local band. Um, it's a song called a B.O. Acid <laughs> for bitches on acid. Uh, we we do local shows. I I actually um, it's kind of funny because you're probably thinking of uh, oh, local musicians coming to do some computer stuff. No, I'm actually uh, I came here for Linux Fest last year, and with nothing to do afterwards, and so I'm just still here. And uh, so I live in Bellingham now. <laughs> and uh, I, I live in a house with about 20 hippies. And, and uh, it's kind of like the open source house. And uh, our band is you know, just kind of all the people that showed up that want to be in a band. And so we're the open source band. Uh, so uh, this is all very dear to me. Um, every closure presentation has to have a, a mandatory definition slide. Um, I didn't want to do a slideshow because this actually describes how I feel about slideshows. Uh, I feel like it, it would be ripping you off to, uh, and, and this was from Ready Rich, uh, Penn Sunday School, and uh, he says uh, that it's a presentation format designed with the goal of removing any sense of spontaneity or originality from teaching. No. Of course, this is a Lisp, uh, you know, like here, so that means the noun is some kind of function. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's exactly it. And uh, yeah, this is uh, I call this the dawn of closure. I did this with GIMP. Uh, my my friend paid me ten dollars to do it. Um, uh, that's the buildings in uh, Portland that I put on top of the. It, it's a Ween album, I guess. Strangely enough, the monthly closure meeting happened right about there. What did? Uh, th there's a monthly closure meetup in Portland that happens at Puppet Labs, which would be right about there. Oh, cool. I went to the Seattle one, which is called Seizure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, here's closure right, right at the top of the salaries worldwide, uh, according to the Stack Overflow survey. Um, the US one is like second, I think. And, uh, there, there's the, the benchmark comparison or the, the, um, the real world comparison app, uh, the closure script with reframe. Uh, it's the only one that's under a thousand lines of code to make a, a fully featured web app. And uh, it, it's well suited for me because I only type with one hand. Um, and yeah, th this was the conclusion of this article. Um, Close your script with reframe gives you the most bang for the lines of code. Closure is known for being unusually expressive. And, and I, I feel like that, that it's a really great um, example of the Unix philosophy you know, being applied um, you know, to, uh, to modern software. Um, the, the closure ecosystem uh, very much favors libraries over frameworks, you know, which is to make one thing that just does that, does it well. And uh, I stole this slide from Brian Cantrell. Um, and uh, he says, four decades later, this philosophy remains the single most important revolution in software systems thinking. Um, yeah, I mentioned Brave Closure is a great, great place to start. You got to smash some hobbits. Um, foreclosure is kind of like the uh, canonical set of problems. Uh, it, it gets a lot of them from Project Euler, um, which are like, um, you know, <coughs> starts out where you do fizz buzz, but you have to like calculate like the first thousand uh, 
numbers or something. And that, uh, th this is actually a lot more interesting than that. Um, and uh, if you go to my GitHub, I made a, a little program that lets you do the same problems uh, right from the command line. Um, it was one of the one of the first things that I wrote in Clojure for learning Clojure, because uh, it, uh, it it's just a, a very um, a very good uh, pedagogical system that um, you know, takes you from ground zero you know, and uh, into solving, doing things like uh, Conway's Game of Life. <laughs> and uh, Maria.cloud is um, much more uh, for people who are, are visually oriented. It teaches you um, closure um, by learning how to draw shapes and things like that. Um, if anyone's used, uh, uh, learned from like uh, How to Design Programs, which is a great book, uh, which is kind of the successor to SICP in a lot of ways. Uh, and um, where they that they have uh, have you build a make a rocket ship take off or something like that, but um, besides being a great learning resource, the, this Maria.cloud is actually a live notebook interface. Um, and it's a great place uh, where it, it is really cool, where you just uh, you have code blocks and prose blocks and. Um, I would almost use something like that for what I'm going to do today, but I, I ended up doing something um, on my own, which um, we'll, we'll get into now. So what I want to do is just paste this into a um, a new document and call it uh, index HTML. Let's see, can I make a directory for this? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, or you can go into uh, temp if you want. You can make it right in the home directory, wherever you, wherever you want. Oh, I forgot about the uh, the the eighteen point rule or something. That if you're if you're doing live coding, like don't ever have text that smaller than 18 points, but I, I, I say like 28 point rule. Uh, I like my text huge. Did I not copy it? Mm -hmm. oh, is there something going on with the uh, control key? Oh, it's or switched, yeah. So oh. this guy is the actual control key. Oh, okay. yeah. that's the one I was going to anyway. So. <laughs> All right, um, then I'll uh, load that in here. Oh, let's see, I'll just. All right, so this is uh, this is just our skeleton page. Let me get that bigger. And um, th this is, uh, yeah, I can just, just show you how, um, how this is live uh, and editable. I put an expression there to add uh, 6, 7, and 8, and it, it gives me 21. So that, that's the, um, the closure script snippet. Uh, but this here is a reagent snippet. Um, and this is actually returning um, uh, it, an HTML element here. This uh, this is a paragraph element. Like I could change this to uh, H1, uh, and and it uh, it makes it big. And so, what um, 
I, I hope you weren't expecting me to just have this whole game memorized and just uh, d just start figuring it out. Um, what I did is I, I have uh, I have different branches uh, set up with um, at different stages of completion, uh, so that I can cheat, but at least be transparent about my cheating. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Oh, yeah, you said it. Okay, that is that is step one. So, so first of all, um, we're going to define some constants, like um, how um, how big is our grid going to be, and and how many mines are we going to put in the minefield, and so so here um, we've got board width. Uh, and the board height, we're going to do a 12 by 12 grid uh, with 18 mines in it. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually pretty easy with 18 mines. Uh, let's make that a little harder. Uh, I, I want to see, uh, see some big numbers. <laughs> like, uh, let's try 26. So, so now what we can do, um, since these functions are defined, uh, we can type board width. And, uh, and it returns 12. And uh, we just created an IDE. Um, uh, this is just a, it's a really, I think it's a pretty cool workflow. Uh, and uh, if I wanted to add another block, you know, I could just put that in the, um, the, the source code. But I, I find that this is a great, a great way to work and it gives you parentheses matching. Um, you know, which which is really great. Uh, you know, working with lists. You know, so that you know it highlights the, those brackets for me. That that's and does the indentation. Um, so yeah, let let me um, let me pin this. Uh, The, the range function gives us a, um, just a list of integers uh, from, uh, in this case, zero uh, until a given um, number. So that, that'll give us, um, we're going to make our grid. And what, what we're going to use um, to create our sequence is, is closures for macro, which it's, it's not like a, a for loop like in imperative languages, um, which you know, creates a loop and uh, you have a throwaway variable and it does something a certain number of times. Um, but what for is in closure is a sequence comprehension. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to create uh, a sequence um, from from the result of running um, a set of functions, and, and what this will do is it's going to take these uh, these two sequences of our board range and board height and 
spit out a two-dimensional matrix for us so that we'll have uh, x and y coordinates to represent the squares. And so, um, so we'll have a variable x which will be uh, the number of elements of the board width. But by doing this way, we, could, we can easily change, um, you know, if we wanted to make a bigger game or something. I, I actually use this by, uh, I started with Timothy Prattley's tic-tac-toe game, uh, which he, he has a really good video on YouTube um, for learning closure script. And, uh, so I, I actually stole a lot of his code, um, as one does uh, when they're learning how to glue stuff together. <laughs> actually, the visual thing, it might be a bit more tricky. You just add the Z variable then and make it 3D. <laughs> Ooh, we could do, well, why stop there? We could make like a multi-dimensional minesweeper. <laughs> but yeah, so here it's, it's returning um, this, uh, we have um, yeah, just a vector for, for each square, and that, that'll represent our squares. And uh, so what, what I'll do is um, we'll call this, we'll define, in, we'll define this as squares. <coughs> and as you can see, then we can type squares and we get our squares. And then, um, we need, uh, we need to somehow randomly pick a bunch of squares to put lines in. Um, and so uh, what we need to do is uh, we, we have our, um, our variable here, number of lines, which is 26. And um, so I figure we'll, um, we'll use the repeat function. To, uh, and we'll represent um, a mine uh, with the number one. So that'll give us 26 ones. And then, uh, then we'll, we'll subtract that from the total number of squares to get um, how many zeros we need and then use the, fun the shuffle function. Uh, well, first uh, we're gonna use the into uh, operator to put both of these, uh, our, well, our set of zeros and our set of ones uh, into a data structure. So there we have uh, our list of 26 ones and, uh, and 12 times 12 minus 26 zeros. Um, and we have a convenient shuffle function that will um, shuffle those for us. There, now we have randomly dispersed ones uh, so that are going to represent our minds. And uh, we'll, we'll, call this, uh, we'll call this data structure minds. Now here, here what I've done is um, created a, uh, a hash map, um, which uh, takes um, our, our set of squares and our, our set of lines and uh, assigns one to the other um, in a, a key value relationship. Um, so then what we can do is uh, Clo Closure actually makes it really easy to work with hash maps. 
um, we can just uh, the, we use the map as a function, um, which will look up a certain key, you know, kind of magically. You know, so we can we can put in any set of coordinates, and it'll tell us uh, if it has a mine there or not. And so this is all this is all great. We're we're um, we've got the basic um, you know. Uh, architecture of, of the game uh, as far as its data representation but what about uh, what about actually putting stuff on the screen um, we, we haven't really done anything so So th this here is a function that I, another one that I stole from uh, Timothy Pratley's uh, tic-tac-toe game. It just, uh, it just makes a, um, a rectangle cell. Um, and th this is, um, it's, it's a syntax for representing uh, HTML elements called hiccup, uh, which is really great. It's a, you know, kind of a better way to write HTML, if you ask me. Um, uh, you only have to have one tag, uh, you know, instead of two. <laughs> so it's a, and parentheses are just so much nicer to look at than angle brackets, you know, those pointy things. And so this is using the uh, CSS, uh, I think it's from CSS, the view box, um, which is creating a, um, uh, it's creating a grid for us, uh, the board width by the board height. And within each one of these, it's going to return uh, our rep cell function here, which will include the, a set of coordinates, uh, which, as, as you'll see, we're going to need. And the the last uh, the last thing in this block is what gets rendered, and uh, which in this case it's this function that says render board. And so there we have. Um, we have our set of squares. Let me uh, organize this a little better. How am I doing on time? Are we? Oh, we're about ten minutes past. Oh, really? Oh, I guess we're not getting kicked out of the room, are we? So we need something to represent a mine. Um, and uh, I decided to just use an X, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, from tic-tac-toe. <laughs> and so yeah, this is, um, it, this is a, the SVG for, for an X. Um, And in order to, um, we're going to modify this so that it's not just going to return a, a rectangle cell. It's going to return, if, if it has a line in it, uh, we want it to put an X on that square. So um, we're, we're going to return the rect cell um, anyway. Sorry. Those will just be dog pictures from my dog walker popping up. <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're going to create a, con a, uh, a conditional with the if statement. Um, well, it, it's it's the if function. There are are no statements in closure um, to be technical, but um, so. 
So we're going we're gonna to look up the square in our mind field. Um, Ij, how, how about x and y? That makes more sense. That'll be consistent. Then we're going to call our mind function on that square. I think I might have messed something up. Oh, I need another bracket, I think. This is where the, uh, the parentheses matching really comes in handy. I think, uh, oh, there's something interesting going on now. Oh, you'll need to change your IJ up a bit. Oh, ah, that's, uh, thanks. There, now we have, um, we have a visual representation of what, uh, what we had, you know, which uh, you, you have no idea how long it actually took me to, uh, to, to get it to this point. <laughs> I'm curious, since we're probably not going to have the whole thing, is there some, at some point, are you going to be actually using the macros? Um, no, no, actually, um, I uh, am a subscriber to Macro Club, and the, the first rule of Macro Club is don't write macros. <laughs> uh, well, I, I actually, I, I've written one macro, um, which uh, you know, is uh, called PF, um, which... Uh, there, there's PP, which is a macro that pretty prints the last thing that uh, that you printed at the REPL, and mine just uh, spits out a file for you. Um, and so, yeah, that's the one macro I've ever written. Yeah, and macros are kind of weird in Closure Script. Um, there's uh, some some kind of voodoo going on there, or, or a lot of uh, I, I think a lot of uh, core functions in Closure are macros in Closure Script. Because well, without macros, it's in a way, what's the difference between doing it in Clojure script versus just plain old JavaScript, other than the syntax? Oh, well, if you, if you looked at the difference, I, I think it would be a lot uglier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we have a, a visual representation of our game, but um, that's that's not how Minesweeper works. We need to cover the squares up. Um, so we'll um, we'll have another element that um, is just uh, just a gray box is what we'll start with. So this is a rectangle, um, 0 0.9 by 0 0.9. Oh, we're making it clickable already. <laughs> but yeah, so this has a um, it ha has a click function. You know, you know what? What what we need to do is um, in, introduce the atom, which which is the way that uh, that uh, mutable state, uh, so to speak, is managed in closure. And uh, it's it's a reference type that's kind of like a pointer to something. Um, so if you 
have a language w with only immutable data structures, how do you how do you have something that that cha how do you represent change? And uh, so um, you have something called an atom, which uh, you can change what it points to. And, and they usually call it, it's usually called app state, uh, which we're uh, probably getting, uh, is there another uh, presentation? There's another speaker coming in. Okay. All right. I don't know exactly when, but sometime in the next few minutes. He goes on at 45. All right, so, yeah, apologies about the, uh, the technical issues, but hopefully you got a little taste of uh, what it's like. And if, if you want to see the rest of the project, um, uh, just check out uh, poor Costumus on GitHub and uh, have, have fun with closure. <laughs>